Well, the Detroit Tigers tied, which is always weird. It's spring training. It's weird to say, though, no less. We're going to talk about the great pitching. We're going to talk about the not-so-great hitting. And then we're going to player preview the 2024 season for Brendan White. All today on Locked on Tigers. You are Locked on Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. Thank you so much for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code at Locked On for $20 off of your purchase. All righty, welcome in everybody. Happy Wednesday to all, the halfway point of the week here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this baseball game. The Tigers tied 0-0, zero to zero, high-scoring affair down in, uh, in Lakeland on Tuesday. We'll talk plenty about that. Again, really good pitching, not very good hitting. Break down all the performances in that regard. Then we will talk uh, a little bit, just five seconds about the in injury report. Uh, and then we will end by talking about Brendan White and his 2024 campaign. Obviously is not going to start the season on the major league roster, but somebody who ended up pitching almost 41 innings out of the bullpen for the Detroit Tigers last year. Um, and is still on the 40 man roster. I'm, I don't want to say I'm sure, but again, injuries happen. They're going to go through a lot of pitchers. Would not shock me if he got another decent opportunity in the majors at some point this year. So we'll talk about him. Let's start off by talking about this ball game, though. Um, also, I'm recording this right after the Wings overtime win over the Columbus Blue Jackets. A very, very fun hockey game on Tuesday night. Uh, hopefully, I can get the season on track. We're hoping. Okay, you can listen to Brian and I talk about that over at Locked On Red Wings. Um, so, 0-0. Zero zero. Spring training's weird. 0-0. Zero zero. I, I keep wanting to say the Tigers lost because I see a 0 next to the Tigers, and obviously you're not going to win. So, I, I keep assuming that, and then I remember it's spring training. You know, it's it's funny when people ask, like, what do you want first, the good news or the bad news? I feel like most of the time people go bad news first, right? Get the bad news out of the way, and then you can end on a high note. For whatever reason, we're not doing that. We're starting with the good news. I don't know why I wanted to do it this way, but that's what we're doing. So Jack Flaherty goes five innings, four hits, no earned runs, no walks, seven strikeouts in this one. Absolutely phenomenal. And this wasn't the Phillies B team either, right? It wasn't their A team, certainly. It's not the lineup they're going to have on opening day. It's not a lineup if they make the postseason that they're going to roll out there. David Dahl was in the lineup. Shout out Dahl to Detroit. Real ones, remember. Um, but uh, you know, it, it wasn't nobody's either, right? Castellanos was in this game. Kingery, uh, Merrifield, right? Like there, there was uh, a, a decent amount of uh, of starters in that game as well. So uh, this was a really, really impressive performance, and even more so than just the result. The stuff looked fantastic, and that is the biggest reason for optimism for me after this outing. This is like legitimately, I am trying not to overreact to one spring training outing. That's where I currently am with this. Uh, he looked that good. This is a guy who, in his career, there is a direct correlation, direct correlation between the effectiveness of his fastball and how good of a season he has had, right? When he was really good and getting Cy Young votes and whatnot, it was consistently, you know, mid-90s fastball, and it was a really effective fastball. In the last few years, when that ERA has skyrocketed and his effectiveness has really fallen off, the fastball velo has gone down. The fastball effectiveness has gone down. So watching him, I know it's a spring training game, and I know that that not everybody he faces is a major leaguer, but watching him go out there and hit 97 miles an hour at one point on a swinging strike that was a strikeout, by the way. It wasn't just some random pitch. Seeing him hit 97 on the gun, 
that'll that, that'll make you feel some type of way. It'll get you really excited. And I thought the fastball held really well all game. I thought the stuff outside of the fastball was phenomenal. His slider was legit. That was a disgusting pitch. Really effective. Again, velo up on those as well. But movement-wise, was good. I thought it was located really well. I thought Jake Rogers caught a heck of a game. We'll talk about the offense here in the second, and, and we'll obviously talk about the bullpen uh, that you know kept zeros on the board as well. But my goodness, uh, Jake Rogers was really, really sharp behind the plate, and he is such a good defender behind there and is something that uh, you know we've been talking about here since he was in the minor leagues basically um he has uh I, I think a lot of the pitchers consistently talk about how well he handles the staff I also think there's room to grow still with him right this is a, a guy that um before Tommy John had was known for having a really good arm and not that it was bad last year but I even think you know we talked about that earlier in the year he's talked about it right some of the beat Writers have asked him about it as well. There might even be some room to grow a little bit more and get back to pre-Tommy John kind of arm strength with him. So that's all really exciting stuff. And uh, I'm very, very optimistic. You know, Jake, whether he hits 20 home runs or not, you know, is we'll see whether he can replicate that year in and year out. But uh, at a bare minimum, the dude is going to give you a, a really good game behind the dish. And uh, I think that that's what a lot of teams really ask for out of the catcher position at the end of the day. So Glad that Jake Rogers is on my team. I Jack Flaherty talked about how important he was to the game and how much he likes uh, throwing to him. And Jack Flaherty looked absolutely stellar. So again, not trying to overreact too terribly much to one spring training outing. Uh, but he was even at a point where I, I was somewhat... I, I was wondering if he was going to go back out there for the sixth. And they were like, you know what? You're hitting 97. All right, let's uh, let's see if maybe you can uh, you can go into the sixth and keep that below up there. But it's a fine line to walk in the spring, right? You don't want to push guys too much, but you want to stretch them out. It's a really really fine line to walk. But um, so at the end of the day, I'm just going to take it and run. I'm very optimistic about what we saw to him. Uh, so we've talked about that. We talked about Jake Rogers a little bit. The rest of the bullpen obviously held strong as well with shutout ball. Shelby Miller, Alex Lang, Andrew Chafin, Tyler Holton, all throwing up zeros, uh, and none of them allowing a hit or a walk. Four hits off Flaherty. Shelby Miller, Alex Lang, Andrew Tafe, and Tyler Holton, four innings of perfect baseball. Good luck, right? Uh, but again, even if, you know, you get deeper into games, you get some subs in there, even if the results and the box score numbers don't matter, uh, the, the stuff from all of them I, I thought was – Really good. I thought Tyler Holton looked the best. He's looked probably all spring in my eyes. Andrew Chafin was pumping 93, 94, you know, borderline 95 at one point with his fastball. That's a great sight to see that, you know, again, consistently sitting in that 93, 94 range with him is going to be important. Shelby Miller, I thought looks really good. That splitter can obviously be a swing and miss pitch, but I think it can be a really good ground ball pitch too. And, and just, uh, I, I really liked what I saw out of him. He has a zero ERA in the spring, not a boatload of opportunities, but still for, you know, he's looked really sharp and had a, just a fantastic year last year for the Dodgers. So that's good. Alex Lang, the last player we'll talk about. We'll do that right after this. Got to talk to y'all today about our friends over at prize picks. Football may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up, whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court, there's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year. So get in on the excitement with prize picks. America's number one fantasy sports app where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000 with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. This is literally the time to get it on the action. There is no better time. You're selecting more or less on certain player stats. And with the tournament here, this is the most fun time to do it. So download the app today. Use code LOCKDOWNMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, LOCKDOWNMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, everybody. Welcome back here. Segment two of Locked on Tigers. Appreciate you all for tuning in. 
making us your first listen every single day. Shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day. We will be back tomorrow. Uh, as you know, also Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel, Locked On Sports Today. Baseball fans, mark your calendars for today, March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern. You can get the best MLB season preview coming exclusively to Locked On Sports Today on March 20th. That's today at 7 p.m. Eastern. Be the first to get local insight from the MLB local experts of Locked On Podcast Network. Find it March 20th at 7 p.m. Again, tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or for free on the Amazon Fire TV channels app. All righty. Talking about Alex Lang, one inning of perfect ball for him with two strikeouts. This was, in my eyes, pretty comfortably the best he's looked this calendar year, right? This is the best he's looked in the spring. Uh, I thought that he was commanding the fastball really well, and they have made it such a point with him to get start off on an 0-1 count. <laughs> that is something that has been, A.J. Hinch has talked about, uh, the pitching staff just in general has kind of had a mindset on, but Alex Lang has kind of epitomized you know, the difference between starting off account 01 and 10. A lot of our beat writers have talked about it as well. It's a huge, huge, huge point of conversation for Alex Lang. And I thought in this game, even when he was, you know, leaving the zone, he had no problem going right back in it. Um, I, I thought he looked absolutely fantastic. And uh, th this was an actual Alex Lang, like commanding the zone, filling the strike zone attacking the strike zone performance and uh again it's one performance in spring i'm not saying he's like fixed and he's just gonna be you know uh, a one eight era reliever all year now but it's good to see that uh you know this close to opening day that it seems to be clicking for him and hopefully he can carry that into the regular season because uh when he is on and we talked about this in his player preview Alex Lang, who doesn't walk that many hitters, would be like the greatest reliever in baseball. Like that's how good he is. It's just he he has a a flaw, and it is to the max. It it is really uh, again. He's like bottom five percent, bottom two percent at points in walk rate uh, throughout the year last year. So uh, it's just really really dramatic and and uh, a huge one that he has to address. But uh, I thought looked really really good in this outing. All right. Offensively, obviously they get shut out. Not a great day at the office. Uh, I didn't realize until right before I got on air that Parker Meadows had the only hits in the game. Parker Meadows went three for three. The Tigers had three hits. So the team out, if outside of Parker Meadows got no hit. We had one player get a hit today. How many different ways can I word that to make it sound sad? Um, so not a great day, obviously. And, uh, you know, there, there's a few guys we have to talk about. Uh, I guess we can start off with Torkelson. He was obviously the biggest, uh, most notable performance of the day for all the wrong reasons. 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. I have been digging my heels in on the, you know, like I'm not going to freak out about Torque Spring. I'm not going to, you know, get, get super upset or say that he's going to have like an awful regular season because of his numbers in the spring. I, I'm not going to, yeah, you know, I'm going to try not to overreact to this. And, and I've really, really dug my heels in on that. Um, this game was, he, he looked lost in the batter's box. This was, this was different than previous games where, you know, you, you, you couldn't look at this performance and go, oh, well, the approach wasn't great or, oh, he's just hitting it right at people or, oh, like, et cetera, et cetera. This was, was genuinely, he looked completely lost at the plate on Tuesday. Um, he, he, he looked like he had no feel for uh, what the Phillies were throwing him and was just completely ineffective. So, again, it is still spring. We do still have over a week until opening day. I, I'm not going to, you know, say, obviously, I'm not going to come on here and be like, oh, well, he's bad in the spring. So, that must mean he's going to have a terrible regular season or, you know, whatever. He had an awful spring last year and had 30 homers and 90 plus RBIs. But I am going to say that he hit really poorly in April last year. And I would much prefer it not take, and this goes really for everybody, not even just Torkelson specifically, 
not have to use April to like warm up and get the timing down. That is what spring is for. So I'm hoping that's my stance currently. I'm hoping <laughs> that he can get it together <laughs> by opening day so that the timing can be down and we can be ready to roll by then because, um, yeah, I, I don't want to have, uh, you know, 500 OPS or whatever it was last year in April again before we start seeing, you know, decent hitting from him at, at the plate. So uh, that's really my biggest thing. Not that the whole season is a wash or he's going to be bad all year, just that I, I, yeah, maybe let's let, let's get it together. We got a week. Let's get it together. Why not? Right? Why not? Sounds fun. Um, Javi Baez, not great. He hit a ball hard. <laughs> I say that like half facetiously. Like I, <laughs> anytime I say anything even remotely positive about Javi, uh, there's a group of people that get mad. I, uh, he's been really bad. Uh, you want to talk about Torkelson spring training numbers. Javi Baez, the spring training numbers, <laughs> make Torkelson look like Barry Bonds. So, um, yeah, it, it's it, it hasn't been great. We'll do, again, we'll talk about that in his player preview, which I'm still procrastinating, but we'll probably do later this week. That's pretty much all I got. Again, there was one person on the team that had a hit. So not a great day at the office. Uh, but this hasn't been, again, they had four runs in the last game. They had six before that. They had six and nine in the game before that. Seven in the game before that. Um, you know, it, it's not like this team has has been putting up zeros, you know, a, a lot lately. And it's still spring training at the end of the day. So we're going to take a deep breath and we're, we're going to move on. We've talked about the performances that were bad. Zero to zero game. Uh, getting pretty optimistic about the pitching, though. Again, pretty... Try not to overreact on either side. Can you can you see what I'm trying? <laughs> try not to overreact to the to the hitting performance yesterday, and also trying not to overreact to the really good pitching performance at the same time. Trying my best to walk that line. Don't know if I'm doing a very good job. Probably not. Um, but let's uh, let's move on to actually really quickly injury report. The only person on the injury report in the organization right now is. Sawyer Gibson Long, and he's scheduled to throw a live BP today, Wednesday, as you're listening to this. So uh, uh, that's good. Knock on wood, you know, do whatever you do to, to put good vibes out there that that hopefully maintains for a while and holds. It obviously won't last all year, but we'll, we'll take it as long as we can get it. Uh, that our injury sheet looking pretty clean at the present moment. Um, I don't even really want to, like, talk about it. Um, let's move on to Brennan White in his 2024 season. Uh, in 2023, Brennan White pitched in quite a lot of innings. <laughs> uh, this was a guy that started off the season in the minors and ended up throwing, you know, appearing in 33 games and throwing almost 41 innings for the Tigers, which I don't think very many people had on their bingo card. Uh, he went 509 ERA, 0.2 F4 for whatever that is worth, 9.74 K per nine, 3.32 walk per nine. Uh, there's really one big thing that I Brennan White needs to work on, and everything else I, I think will fall into place if that happens. So this isn't going to be the longest uh, player breakdown ever. Uh, relievers just in general aren't as long of player breakdowns as you know position players and whatnot. But uh, for me, there, we'll go more in depth, and, and I'll kind of – try to paint a picture on what I'm talking about and why I, I feel the way I do. But there's really just one glaring thing that I think he needs to work on. If he can do that, I think Brendan White could still be a pretty decent pitcher, uh, reliever, you know, middle reliever at the major league level. So we'll talk about all of that right after this. Got to talk to you all day today, rather, about our friends over at Game Time. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You can see the view of your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total upfront, so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. Buy tickets today, and in a matter of seconds, you can have your tickets available straight to your phone. Two taps, and you're all set. They're obsessed with finding ways to get you to save money on your tickets. They have deals right up to the start of the event, which is why it's my favorite, and even an hour after the event starts. I'm very spontaneous when it comes to attending sporting events, and this really accommodates that very, very well. It's the place to find last-minute seats. You can find exclusive flash deals on sponsored tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and so much more. 
With zone deals, you can pick the section and game time will pick the seats for big time savings. So take all the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code locked on for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Third and final segment of Locked on Tigers. Appreciate you all for tuning in as always. So talking about Brendan White, he will obviously start the season in AAA to no surprise to anyone. He's on this 40-man roster, though, and uh, we didn't see him a whole lot in the spring because of the injury. Uh, He had arm. And again, like if that ends up being more serious, then obviously he's not going to pitch really much of anywhere this year. But I'm hoping that that is uh, was kind of just a minor thing and, and he's feeling a lot better now. Um, But, you know, the biggest thing that I'm looking for out of Brennan White is just better command of his slider. It's really not rocket science. And when looking at what he did, I I think the biggest telling sign of that is, A, the slugging percentage against his slider, and B, his righty-lefty splits. Last season, again, ERA in the season over five. Like, this wasn't, you know, lights out, perfect baseball by any stretch of the imagination, um, but against righties, had a sub-700 OPS, kind of cheating there. It was a 699, so barely under 700. But still, it's well below league average hitter uh, when a righty was in the batter's box. Versus lefties, had an 800 OPS and a 467 slug. Uh, in total, against righties and lefties, his slider had a 400 slug against. Now, Against righties, it was 306. It's not bad, right? Against lefties, it was 643. Really, really bad, right? That's like really high. That is, that's going to be one of the higher slugging percentages in all of baseball. <laughs> so, and his forcing fastball was really, really effective against lefties. So, my point being, one of two situations it has to happen here. One, He's just only going to be used against righties going forward. And it's just going to be A.J. Hinch is just going to play matchups and he's just going to go in against kind of righty heavy lineups. And that's going to be that. And he's going to be a middle reliever that is a righty specialist. And that's a very real possibility. That could be a thing, right? Fastball slider guy makes sense. Okay. Or I guess there is a reality in which he develops a change up or a splitter or something to be more effective against lefties or, or option C, I guess his slider becomes more effective and he works on it so that it can be an effective pitch against lefties. We've seen it before, right? Alex Fido's slider, we just talked about earlier last week, effective against both righties and lefties. Brennan White has not shown that at the major league level. It's effective against righties. He gets a lot of swings and misses. He can throw it low and away. He also just has a tendency in general to righties or lefties. That slider will hang over the heart of the plate every once in a while. And so I I think command of that pitch is really just of the utmost importance. And that sounds like super simplistic, but uh, sometimes making it simple is is the way to go. And and I think that uh, that is really the biggest thing that I'm looking for out of him this season. Uh, I, I, again, I expect him to pitch in the majors at some point. He won't obviously make the major league roster, but I am, I am expecting Brennan White to pitch, you know, what, 15 to 30 innings maybe for the Detroit Tigers at some point, just because the Tigers are obviously going to go through a lot of relievers, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, We've talked about that a lot, right? Pitching depth matters a boatload. You're not going to stay fully healthy in your bullpen. You're certainly not going to stay fully healthy in your starting rotation throughout the course of a year. So expect Brennan White at some point. He's on the 40, um, and that is, like, really it. Uh, I'm, I mean, he had really good chase numbers, right? To prove my point, that slider got a lot of righties chasing, got a really good whiff numbers, right? That slider, again, got a lot of righties uh, whiffing, 42% whiff rate on his slider. That's really good. His four-seam fastball against lefties had a 40.6% whiff rate. That slider number was actually only against lefties as well. So uh, has the ability to get swings and misses, just when he when he misses his spot, that ball goes, gets absolutely crushed. And that's something that just in general we saw far too often last year to be a consistent middle reliever at the major league level. 
But the fastball grades out pretty well. It was a pretty effective pitch last season. The slider, we've eye test numbers, whatever, has the ability to be pretty good. That thing moves a boatload. But when he misses, he misses a lot. And the way that his slider is shaped, it it hangs. <laughs> and it, you know, you hang, we bang. Like it has the, the the hitters have the the ability to to hit that ball really really far. So. That's pretty much all I got. As far as expectations, aside from just, uh, I've already mentioned a billion times, the fact that he pr- will probably be up here at some point. If we can even just get sub 4-5 ERA ball out of him, that's fine, right? That is that is effective. He can be, you know, eat some innings, be a righty, more specialist guy, uh, you know, middle relief, not super high leverage type of uh, type of pitching. I think that there is a role for him still on this team going forward. He has good stuff. He has really good stuff. It's just a matter of getting that command down. And if if he gets the command down and he's still not effective against lefties, then they're going to have to just fork in the road. Hey, you're either only going to face righties or you need to develop a change-up slash splitter to use against lefties. That's pretty much it. That's all I got. I like Brennan White a lot. He was on the show. Really big, just like baseball and analytics guy. Really loves the numbers of the game. Um, I, I'm a huge fan of his. Hopefully, he can uh, he can kind of reestablish himself this year because uh, we saw flashes last season, obviously, but need that more consistently and need to command a lot more cons- consistently, which I'm sure he's aware of as well. Okay, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think that's it. Thanks for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every single day. Shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day. We will be back tomorrow. Got a few more player previews left. I think we have four remaining after Brennan White today. So three, yeah, four left. So we will certainly be done just in time for opening day. Uh, And we will also obviously continue talking about spring training, baseball, et cetera. All right. Peace and love. Going to Therapy's Dope. I'll catch you all then, baby. Go Tigers.